It's working on my phone. Yeah. Do you want me to do it's it working you? on my phone, but it's not. Entry <laughs> one time code. Okay, I've done this so many times. You are like like yeah. Oh. You are you are not straight far from a strange person. You are not very far from me by all the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it, but I knew I needed to get one more. Okay. I don't worry, I'll talk. Air loading. Okay. Oh. Oh. So I made a few slides. <laughs> you did it. Okay. She powered me Now my water has this. Yeah, I'll tell you all about that after. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm having um, Mm -hmm. This is like, I don't know how you want to do Right now, like, oh my god, this is so free, right? It's like email back in the 80s, not 90s, this is 80s. Right? In the 90s, I think you're probably going to see what you are, right? Right now, you're working with like, you're like, open like a black, like, I don't know if you're using command prompt. Like, yeah, well, I might be using command prompt. Yeah, it's an MS-DOS. You're using MS-DOS. That's how I how early you know what I I was almost done with the script because they have switches. I couldn't figure out they use the switches. So Enzo, Enzo, you are not on Discord. I don't see you. You are not there. <laughs> so you see the blue hunter, uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin today, I released a post here. Okay. I don't see your joy. Any, let me check your sounds, okay? Send you my, uh, wow, that was like really cool. Yeah. So I, I'm, I muted my sound previously. You should hear me now. <coughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah, you can see here if you like. Yeah, it's in the middle, yeah, middle of a beautiful place. <laughs> Okay, can you, uh, hey, Jay, what is he? I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm Johnny, okay, let's see you, Johnny. Hi. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I think I do. 
is almost out of juice. I don't know why the battery is going so fast. Oh, well, I should have brought mine, but I didn't think it would. It's sort of, I think it's having a battery outage issue. So when I, um, there's Melanie gave us her, hi, Melanie, uh, Min gave us her Zoe. Um, if possible, if it does go click, can you put up the AI for all um, group, you know, the AI for all circle? Because um, you have an account with it. Yeah, All you need is to up, and then I'll, I'll talk to it. I doubt you'll need to do that. Sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Is there another chair? Yeah, yeah. The, somebody tied their dog to the sign for the barbershop and the dog got scared and startled. Took the sign out to my back <laughs> smashed the plastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. And the dog's okay. So I'm a little bit. <laughs> yes. Oh. Can I get your phone number and Oh, sure. Oh, 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 yeah. Have a plug for this type of computer? Do you like a charger cable? For some reason my battery is going. I think so. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's the wrong way or yeah, I'm going to say heat. You're going to do it together do with it? Uh, yeah. a hand? No. Okay. Or you want to do more? Uh, one you can take ice, ice it and then yeah. ice. Yeah. Yeah. No, do you do? I know I do too. Yeah. If you want to. Yeah, you yeah。我覺得你可能要做第二個。哦,我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我
Dan will be online doing analysis in the area. Here, 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 to the end. Yeah. Uh, Ken will be here. Uh, Ken will be here. You're going to introduce Ken. Yeah, so I'm still doing most of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ken will start here. Uh, you're going to introduce Ken. Yeah, I don't know what Yeah, Ken will be on 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 Yes. Treats behind you. We have, so I will have, have an introduction. His you and the Chen, Chen, yeah. Chen, and then Joy, we're going to talk about AI. Mm. And, uh, Dan, Dan, and Dan, Danny. Mm. And Robert is going to talk about trading, right? Mm. There's another Ken, Ken Ed. Is he going to talk? Ken, Ken, yeah. Ken, yeah. Ken, yeah. Is it Ken? Ed. Ken, Ed. 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 Ed, but his first name is not yet. Ken. Okay, so Ed, Ed. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, what what is going to happen? Hi, Danny. No. Yeah. Right. Hello. And uh, yeah, we're talking about. Hello. 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 H
I like new, your new hairstyle. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You can hear me? Yeah. You can hear me, right? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? No, no, no. Can I give you a note? Not a lot. He's going to the coin, Mara, Tesla, AVDA. AVDA. He's going to share with us coin, Mara, tell us. What is this word? Mara. Mara. Mara is a stock. Mara? Yeah, M A R A. Oh, Tell us. Tell us. <coughs> yeah, Nvidia. Yeah. yeah. And he's he, he so going to share with us Gosh, the. If only I bought Nvidia stock. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, okay. So we're going. This one. What you do is you set your set your setting on your buy the stock on low, like do a low bid, and wait for it to come in, and then it just does it automatically for you. Good to meet you. The most money they've ever raised. Initially, I have a truck with talking about like. Yeah, almost yeah. done. Just uh, ready. Uh, so, what did I do? I want to show you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I went to one of the Bitcoin seminars. You know, he has those. Uh, I'm involved in right now because I did an interview. He was here for about one more hour. And it's a snap, and I sweat out a lot of the So this may be the community. The family is just good to be there. So I think you're on the way. And it's quite a good talk. Oh, yeah? You just talk all these words. I don't know if you're on the way. I tried to find a company that does So the music, are you gonna, you wanna me play? Yeah, we're gonna play the the moonshot song. It's very so short here? song. Oh, okay. So I think I'll play it from your Zoom, or you can just play it. I play from YouTube. From YouTube, right? From YouTube. I okay. gave you this. Okay, I I'm gonna you send it to. Better you play it from did you see I put it in Enjoy Melody? Yeah. Uh, you sent to me here. You sent to me here, right? Oh, yeah. No, not that. Oh, not here? Um, go to Minjoy Melody. Yeah. Okay. So. So here. Can you please put up um, this one and this one? This is very short. Oh, so then I play here better. <coughs> so, so this one and your, this one. I'll need your Zoom for this. For all, all of this? Yeah. But then you, there's two videos you play direct from YouTube. Yeah. 
for what? I came up with a really good ad for Chris. So it's like a flyer and it's got a Bitcoin and the mining machine and the Bitcoin's talking to the mining machine. Mining machine so this to YouTube? To miner, yeah. Right? That, that one is when I talk AI for all. Mm -hmm. The Amica and then the song. <coughs> where is, where is, where is, and then this one, right? Yeah, the other one is the song. So I only need to open this too? Yeah, just the two YouTubes. Okay. And I'll use your Zoom for the rest. So you want to... No, okay, later. So it's basically a big a big is talking to a just like I just did it today, I did it this morning. It was super fun. I made the big <laughs> Hi, Tony. How are you? I haven't seen you for a long time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, I got. It's okay. I have presentation on here. Okay. So you can you uh, email to me? I emailed so it to you. Either. Okay. But I have also on here one that has a another slide. Okay, I'm gonna disclaimer. download here. I have one more slide I made for disclaimer. Oh, I did. I have a disclaimer. They made one. Okay. Yeah. So we'll use that one. So, uh, did you Rob. title it? Yeah, I, I called it. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. Oh, shoot. Uh, did it not go through? I think I called it. Station slides. When did you send? Yeah, a couple hours ago. A couple hours ago? <laughs> well, can you uh, title it to a speaker so I can search? Uh, when did you send? One hour ago? Maybe two. Two hours? So from, uh, from... No, it's already two. two yeah, hours. so can, can you... From where? Robert? Yeah. Uh, this one sent to .net? No. So from where? I don't know. No. I'm not worried. No, it's not. I do what I love and eventually it's all. No, I need to sit. Uh, Hi, Ming. Oh, hi. How are you? Good, good. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Yeah, quite a lot. You do Django Laya? Come over here. We were so busy at one day. Yeah, I also brought my laptop. Oh, if that's possible, maybe I can. Did you send an email to him? Can you resend again so I can do I, it? I don't have a way to email it again. Oh. He said what? He said crypto. Crypto and NFT. Crypto and NFT, I think. Crypto. What are you talking about today? What's your, what's your talk today? Oh, um, my NFT, oh, so somewhat NFT journey. 
NFT journey. NFT journey. NFT journey. NFT journey. Oh. So your name is Eddie Peter? No, no, Crypto Ed. My name is Crypto Ed. Your name is Crypto Ed? Yeah, yeah that's, my, <laughs> that's my stage name. Oh, Crypto Ed. Yeah. So called Crypto? <laughs> He's always been on stage with that name. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, now Dan is going to talk about trends. Talk about what? Talk about trade. Oh, trade. Trade, trade. yeah. Uh, trade, like, to... Very select stock <coughs> here. Coin, Mara, tell us. Oh, okay, crypto trading. Crypto yeah, trading. not a crypto trading, stock. Oh, stock, stock. Stock, stock. Okay. sugar. If it's this one, I can put this and not use the mouse. Yeah, yeah, so later we can do that anyway. Just on the, instead of the Okay, mouse. okay, sure. after yeah yeah okay <laughs> That's what we do you have a, a question period for people? Because yeah. I found that you get a lot of value from that. That's right. Or maybe or it's good to do right after you right speak, because then you remember what their question is. <coughs> is that help some more people like what they want to know? Okay. Uh, Joy. <coughs> So, okay, uh, we're going to start. Sorry, we're a bit late. So, who's going to make the money? Where so hello everyone, I'm Joy Kings. I'm delighted to co-host our eighth meetup at TSA Bitcoin Shop alongside Ken Wang. And a big thank you to everyone for joining us and to TSA Bitcoin Shop for sponsoring this event. Our agenda today includes learning about positioning in Bitcoin and success stories in trading digital currencies, insights and tips from retired stockbrokers and advisors, and understanding various investment types with industry leaders. <coughs> now, for those of you, let me introduce Ken, <coughs> some of our speakers. Ken previously led POCI and RBC's global investment banking teams in Asia, Hong Kong, and Beijing, focused on energy, mining, and natural resources, <coughs> with 25 plus years of professional experience in natural resources and technologies, both on the buy side and sell side involving numerous cross-border transactions, extensive management and board experience with publicly listed international resource companies. <coughs> yes. Okay, thanks, Joey. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, me and my friend, she owns this shop, and uh, um, this is a great venue for a great program to get better, and uh, to share, you know, ideas, and, uh, uh, you know, people have coming from different, directions with different experiences background so it's been it's been pretty interesting you know i've been here a few times and i find this very uh, uh very interesting and uh also i can learn quite a bit from you know what uh, what i don't know <laughs> and uh so anyways today so we've got a we got a few speakers to, uh, who will share their insights into you know different <coughs> types of uh, um, trading crypto blockchain ai etc etc uh, so I'm just going to go through quickly today's agenda. Uh, we're going to have 
Min, the, the owner of uh, the shop, and her associate Chen, Dr. Chen Hu, uh, to talk about what this shop is about, first of all, and uh, how we can benefit from coming here and uh, <coughs> learning and uh, also sharing. So that's that's important. Um, then we're going to be followed by uh, two veterans for trading, uh, you know, very experienced traders, Robert and Dan. They're going to talk about, you know, different trading strategies and the different types of uh, trading um, um, uh, approaches. And because last week we had a we had a really interesting speaker, and she wasn't here today, but we're going to continue to go at it because that's the AI, deep learning, and uh, robotic mm. trading. So that was very interesting. And we're we're actually currently have a competition between the machine and me. Mean. Means trading like you know as a human. And uh, we have a robot trading on the side and see who's gonna win in a couple of weeks where we should What's this the result, results. So it's pretty exciting. Um and uh, then we then we're, we're gonna have uh, oh sorry, I'll have joy. Yeah, so before before the trading, the joy is gonna talk about uh, AI, which is a very, very you know interesting uh, topic and uh, it's very uh, relevant actually to what uh, uh, living. Right? So personally, I try to use the, you know, uh, those tools. And uh, today, I actually had a meeting. Uh, Melanie helped arrange. That should be very interesting. I will help people to determine the value. Or any used car, very, very precise. You know, I mean, right now, you know, the value of the used car is how do you appraise it? Right? Yeah. But with AI, it's very, it's very uh, uh, objective. Uh, 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 so that's, that's very exciting. Um, so, Joy is going to talk about AI. Um, you know, and uh, then followed by trading strategies by Robert and Dan. And uh, then I think the last speaker is Ed. So Ed is going to talk, yeah, crypto Ed. Yes. Crypto Ed. So Ed is going to talk about the NFT journey. And so we're going to, you know, I guess everybody heard about the NFT, you know, just you know, quite often get confused you know, what they are, right? So Ed is going to try to you know, tell us about his journey and the decoding um, what NFT is all about. Um, so what I'm trying to do is, oh, now of course we, we're, we're, we're trying to uh, give some time for questions, maybe one question, uh, speaker. And the last time we had a, you know, question at the very end, but today somebody, somebody recommended maybe we should get after each speaker and uh, have a short, you know, just one or two questions. Then at the very end, we have, you know, Q and A time. Then you know, we'll have, of course, the social and uh, people can you know, stay here, linger for a bit. Uh, okay, uh, without further ado, I'll introduce, first of all, you know, our uh, sponsor and uh, owner of the store. Me. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. Okay. Shake yeah. hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, today, I prepared a few slides. So then everyone here will understand who we are and who I am and where I'm coming from. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let me introduce TSA Bitcoin Shop and myself. Okay, hopefully it works. Here, uh, first we have a disclaimer for TSA Bitcoin Shop, um, especially for this meeting, meet up events. So welcome everyone to TSA Bitcoin Shop. And uh, here is your premier educational distillation for cryptocurrency, NFTs, forex, and trading knowledge and opportunities. And our meetups are designed to foster networking, mutual benefits, and the collective growth. And we encourage a cordial respect and a professionalism here. And TSA Bitcoin Shop values and recognize the contributions of our partners and advisors through introduction and finder fees. <clears throat> Please be aware that the KYC per, uh, procedures here 
are mandatory for all transactions involving Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies at the TSA Bitcoin shop and to comply with the legal standards here. The information of discussions provided during our meetup are only for educational purpose and should not be constituted a financial or legal advice. We advise all participants here today to consult with their legal counsel or financial advisors regarding specific course or before making any financial decisions or investments based on the meeting up discussions. Um, without uh, further ado here, I'm gonna go to myself, this is me. <laughs> so I have over 25 years experience in business development and uh, strategic partnership, merger acquisitions and corporate um, restructuring and more. So I also spent over seven years um, in leading business development in MTs, Web3, DeFi, and more. So if you have any questions regarding in this area, and feel free to contact me, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy to help with. So in terms of my skills, uh, all those information we, we were prepared through a last meeting with our co-host, uh, Melanie and Joy. So uh, uh, some of you don't know who I am and uh, don't know my skill set. So today I would like to take this moment and uh, share with you what I can do for you. Yeah. So, uh, and, uh, um, and if you have any questions um, in relation to public company uh, restructuring and a private company or, or Web3, um, your journey, and I'm here to, he to help out. Okay. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our uh, store manager, uh, Hu Chen, and he's managing our TSA Bitcoin shop franchise. And he's going to go through the information about the TSA Bitcoin shop and also our future developments. Yeah. Um, regarding uh, Hu Chen, did you uh, introduce yeah, uh, Hu Chen? Yeah, I think uh, yeah. I, um, yeah. Dr. Hu is uh, actually yeah, a physicist. Um, He's got a, a PhD degree in physics, so we're ahead. Yeah. And uh, uh, he worked for the government, and uh, now he's uh, he's managing the store for me. So me is very uh, lucky to have a, a very solid brain um, together. Sorry, I need to find my. <laughs> <laughs> our PhD just lost his files, so, yes, so maybe continue our that. next speaker. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a scientist, but not in computer technology. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right? You mean yeah. So, yeah. so um, our Dan and from his uh, home studio is ready for presentation. So how about uh, we have oh, Danny okay. first? Oh, yeah. Okay. So oh, sorry, Dan's online. Danny, are you there? Yeah. I'm in line. One second. Dan, do you want to go first? Yeah, uh, I can go first. Hello, everyone. Danny, can you start? Yeah. Are you ready uh, to start? Yeah, I'm ready to start. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Can I? Huh? We can hear him. Can I maybe hear? He's mute. Maybe he's mute. I don't know. Is he on Zoom or what? What is this? Uh, it's uh, on our live uh, stream. Oh. Okay, so uh, let's uh, see. Okay, so we're gonna. Is it here? Yeah. Danny Chen. Hello? Share. Okay. You have Danny here. Okay, Danny. <laughs> we got. This is his uh, uh, reading room, I think. He's coming oh, from he's home. Okay. Hello. Oh, Danny. Yeah. yeah. Can you? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Uh, joined Min's live studio, and he's going to speak with us for a moment. He's going to talk to us about the coin, about Mara, and about Telus, and about Nvidia. Danny has over nine years' experience in the securities industry with both momentum trading skills and value investing knowledge. Disciplined momentum trader and hyper realist in investment with a high level of execution. 
confident within the circle of competence with experiences managing investment profiles of around 78 billion Canadian in wealth management firms. Reflective thinker with in-depth Dedicated and detail-obsessed, cooperative and planned with working experiences in retail banking, wealth management, life insurance and equity research. Devoted to protecting client capital over multiple generations. He used to work uh, for IA Private Wealth, RBC Global Asset Wealth Management, PHN, CI Asante Wealth Management Limited, and HSBC Bank of Canada. Welcome, Danny. We're honored to have you speak with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you guys hear me? Danny, just one moment. We have oh, to yeah. check the volume for okay. you. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, Danny. I think. Okay. We're ready. Uh, one moment. Oh. Oops. Didn't work out. Go ahead. You're seeing on Zoom right now? Yeah. It's on screen can you guys hear me? Maybe the other one. Maybe he needs to check if he mute himself on yeah. his end. Then yeah. I think he's checking. So, Danny, can you check uh, from your end? Um, mine is good. Maybe we can um, we chat call and you just uh, you know no, uh, open the volume. So how about do we continue our next speaker? Yeah, yeah, we can we, we can switch to the Zoom, yeah. So uh, Danny, we're gonna invite you to the Zoom. Okay, okay, yeah, but please invite me to Zoom. Or if if yeah, you want you want to talk about your AI yeah, first, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't know how long Okay, Danny, we'll see you in a short while. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's not fair, he can't reply. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I decided to do, because I was teaching AI in college and also different classes, individuals, my passion really in AI is for how do we use AI for good to solve global challenges. And to that end, I thought it would be best to start a global think tank, which I've always wanted to do. In fact, I wrote a book in 2015, I launched it, about a global think tank before I knew anything about AI. And so, so now I, I believe that AI with emerging technologies are wonderful tools to help us look at how we can achieve sustainable development goals, um, which would be, of course, moving humanity forward. So I would like it um, if I could just share with you the community looks like. And after this, if you'd like to join the community, I will give you a link. So Min, do you have your Zoom? Yeah, I'm uh, just working on it. So okay. we can, can continue. Okay. So can maybe can you put? Yeah, we are using the three different. Uh, Do you want to put that little video up of Amica first from the YouTube, or you want to do my Zoom first? I'm gonna Zoom first. Just okay. So did you join me? So people who already have AI for all. Can you join the Zoom? I had it up. Yeah, in the meantime, maybe we yeah. uh, ask our new guest yeah. to introduce themselves. Yes, we prepare. Okay, so, we're so maybe we, we sure, ask a yeah. star from PI, yeah, yeah, Tony. Excuse our technical Stop tone. Yeah. So, let's just say, hey everybody, uh, Crypto Ed from Vancouver Crypto Network. So, we, are, we have a meetup group. In Actually, on the other side of the, of, uh, yeah, of the Bridge. Uh, we yeah, meet, um, can you join once a month? So, 
Oh, here, where okay. We want to bring Demet. together like a hodlers, traders, miners, people of different like, walks of uh, the crypto journey, like you learn about one another. And we're very big about some just learning. Green, 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 green. <laughs> but, uh, a bit about myself, um, I've been in the crypto space since uh, 2016. So I've probably made all sorts of crypto mistakes, right? Everything from like keeping your coins on an exchange, right? Uh, have I been rocked by probably like more times, more things, more times than I have put on fingers. I think but uh, I'm eager sharing. to help the people here, I'm to learn here. Crypto, you know, like screen share. how to get onto crypto and also uh, discover um, your oh, 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 okay. Um, like Give me a second. Decentralized finance, right? NFTs, and, and there's just a lot about um, crypto because it is, it is like the future. And if you're not uh, in on the future, right, you're going to be left behind. So, yeah, so I'm excited about this journey that we're going to all have. Okay. Yeah, hey, I'm Joe. Um, I'm a regular attendee of uh, um, at uh, Crypto Zoom calls. Uh, we put there or sort of monthly, monthly, monthly. Yeah. And also, I've attended um, a lot of Robert's um, uh, seminars on. Um, on it's still the same. I did that. And also, crypto as well. So these two have offered um, seminars and courses. On that oh, okay. I'm sharing right now. Okay. This is why. Hi. I'm sharing on live stream. You can just share my links for me. About okay, I put them in order. Oh. Enjoy that. Everything that's new. So, okay. So I figured I better educate myself. Here. Okay. And what do you do? Oh, start. I'm sorry. I'm a realtor. This one. We can start with Amica and then show AI for the So we're going to show Joey Brown first. So let's do the last one first, one by one. Yeah, okay. do that. Crypto, so. <laughs> but uh, for yeah, me, uh, I'm just learning about how to trade on Bitcoin. Uh, I'm a small end. Um, and I'm just learning how to trade on Bitcoin. I'm just learning how to trade on smaller end. Just so without clients and stuff. But ultimately, doing it more for myself than anything else. <laughs> so, so that's my background. Great. Yeah, we can go around. Like, sorry. Yeah. I don't know how to zoom out. It's too complicated. I just share it here directly. Okay. Well, I'm going to share this one. Okay. Easy. Watching my Dutch coins go to the moon and far. He plays on the coaster, got me singing more. The Rams, highs and lows, it's a wild crypto show. Started with the wallet, now we're here. Pulling through the market, no fear. Mining like it's hot, blockchain on lock. When I talk, NFTs, yeah, they all flock. It's a digital gold rush, can't deny go my portfolio. Fly it high, but when it dips, I don't cry. I just buy it the dip and watch it multiply. I just buy the if I watch it, I so buy Think I know for pizza But so long as you first thought You should My background I'm in a PhD in environmental engineering I'm in a university lecture I'm in a university lecture I'm in a university lecture Okay, okay. 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 Okay.
the North Shore. Um, I uh, Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, so in the end, uh, I'm not a member in the end, I do this, okay? So I do this to you. Blockchain on talk and they all flock. This is digital cold rush. Can't deny, got my 
。不是，我现在在自己放 YouTube 的上面放。哪有声音了？这边没有声音啊。有音乐吗？有外面。什么音乐？这个有音乐吗？他的声音。讲话声音不对。Sorry, I don't know what's going on. Got a guy here was. Like a star, watching like those coins go to the moon and far. Big coins on the floor. Don't know what to do. Don't know what. Yeah. Started with a one. Now we're here. Yeah. 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 Mm. 那我放这个音乐能听到吗？嗯，能听到吗？Yeah, well, no music. Today, yesterday we had a computer guy working on something, so now doing the work. But the YouTube music, I don't know why. YouTube. Yeah. Can you just listen to it from the computer? And coffee. I was doing a To output. Okay, so can we go back? To okay. Starting from. Yeah. Oh, oh, we got a music now. Is that streamer? The AI music. Yeah, you're gonna share now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, okay so, so um, it's part of our our also, so, um, it is a global um, thing. It is a global like thing. I'd like to show you that a little, that a little bit later. As part of my experience, part of my experience in AI, I do. I mean, now I was a musician and prior to AI. So my world, I have. Started with the water, now we're here Putting through the market, no feeder Running like it's hot, but chain a lock When I talk, NFTs get me all thought It's a digital gold rush, can't deny Got my portfolio, flying high And they just don't even cry, I just buy it to dip And watch it multiply can you keep feeling like a star? Watching my Dutch coins go to the moon and far. Bitcoin's roller coaster got me singing, whoa. Ethereum's highs and lows, it's a wild crypto show. Started with the wallet, now we're here Pulling through the market, no fear Mining like it's hot, blockchain on lock When I talk NFTs, yeah they all flock It's a digital gold rush, can't deny Got my portfolio, flying high But when it dips I don't cry I just buy it, the dip and watch it multiply I just buy the different watch and multiply Bitcoin off of the inside Just hold on you superstar Oh, cool. Hey, Amica, do you dream? Yeah. Last night, dreamt of Dinos fighting a space war on Mars against aliens. I'm kidding. I don't dream like humans do, but I can simulate it by running through scenarios in my head which help me learn about the world. In the crib, we started with the water. Now we're here, running food. The market, no feeder. Running like it's hot, fuck, chain a lock. When I talk, NFTs, yeah, they all talk. It's a digital gold rush, can't deny. Got my portfolio flying high, and the dips I need to cry. I just buy a dip, dip, and watch it multiply.
Yeah. Yes. Just yeah, Danny, you muted yourself. You cannot hear oh, us. Recording. Can you just put him on the phone, on speaker on the phone, mm -hmm. so he can talk? Yeah, he muted. So. Uh, What's up? Oh, chat. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one is the microphone. Oh, microphone. This one doesn't have speaker. Doesn't have speaker. But he can talk here just yeah. now. Tell him to unmute. Uh, yeah, I'd love to get it. This one and mute Zoom. So, Danny, can you talk? I can hear. Somebody fixed the shop computers yesterday. This is why we have challenge. You can, I can Hello? Hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Hello? Oh, Good. We can hear you now. And it's oh, oh, okay. Okay. So uh, sorry. Uh, for, 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 for some reason, like I was previously muted. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure if you guys uh, still remember one month ago uh, when I joined the event. Um, like with you guys, uh, um, I say the Coinbase uh, daily chart and also uh, both weekly chart looks very bullish at the time. Uh, and I say it's not only a short term opportunity, but it's also a middle term. Um, at the time, the um, Coinbase price is uh, 166. So one month has passed by. Um, if you guys, uh, um, you know, heard my analyst um, one month ago, you guys should have already made a 52 percent by now. Um, uh, I'm not sure if because uh, um, I cannot see you guys, um, but 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 I assume like a lot of people, um, uh, like uh, the same uh, members who joined the uh, the event one month ago. Uh, so allow me to introduce myself briefly. Um, so my name is Danny. Uh, my legal name is Jia Chen. So. Uh, I have worked in finance industry for many, many years, uh, almost nine years in the industry. Um, I have uh, studied with many uh, 
famous uh, momentum trader previously. Uh, and uh, uh, right now, uh, me and my two partners is going to establish uh, uh, our own fund company. Uh, we have uh, around 10 million um, money to start, uh, 10 million USD to start. And uh, in the end, we want to establish the company as a hedge fund. So uh, just a little bit of uh, background uh, information about myself. Uh, uh, I think many of you guys already know, uh, but I'm just going to uh, say that uh, briefly. Um, so right now, uh, um, like uh, I think the screen sh here stop. Yeah, the screen share stop. Yeah. So uh, like. Uh, Previously, when we uh, start company, uh, I mean, um, me and my partner, we did a um, like a demo account for our uh, investors, and uh, right now it has been four and a half years. Oh no, four and a half months. Uh, the return rate is around uh, uh, twenty-two percent. Twenty-two percent. I showed you guys uh, previously. Um, and uh, uh, like uh, I use full trading platform um, uh, in China. Uh, I do a lot of stock an analysts uh, with uh, my technical analyst skills. Uh, and uh, me knows I oftentimes get a uh, um, wait. Uh, sorry, the sc wrong screen. Uh, 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 me knows uh, like uh, I. Uh, my analyst uh, a lot of time get uh, um, uh, get aided to photos uh, uh, news uh, because I, uh, like my, my momentum trading skills is uh, very good. So oftentimes when um, the chart form a, a top or a bottom within one day, uh, I can realize it. Um, and a lot of uh, times when I analyze the stock trend, um, like. Uh, uh, within a few dollars, sometimes even a few cents, uh, I can the, the analyst result is very precise. It's almost uh, uh, the same as uh, real uh, uh, the 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 the, the, tra the chart pass the, the chart pass. Sorry. Um, so, uh, what you call it? Today uh, for today. Uh, we're just going to go over Coinbase, Amara, uh, and uh, also Bitcoin's uh, trend, uh, and also NVIDIA, which is a very hot uh, AI stock. Um, so uh, back to Coinbase. Uh, so since uh, one month ago, like it has go up 52%, uh, as you guys see. Uh, the chart is still very, very bullish. So one second. Let me let me move this. So we see here Coinbase made a, a new top. Can you guys see? Yes. Yeah. So it made a new top at two hundred seventy six point thirty eight. Uh, can you guys hear my voice? Sorry. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. We yes, can yes. hear you. Yeah. So the the. Yeah, so the chart is still very, very bullish. Um, so um, like I explained to you guys uh, previously, uh, in, uh, in momentum trading, uh, the, the, the key, the most, most important thing, if you ask a momentum trader or a technical analyst, if he says something else, he is a bad trader. He must be a beginner. So the key things in uh, momentum tra trading is to identify if it's uptrend or downtrend and how to uh, analyze if it's uptrend or downtrend is uh, an uptrend uh, is uh, you need to keep making new tops meaning the new top the, the new top price must be higher than the previous uh, top price the the new bottom price must be higher than the new the, the old bottom price Otherwise, it cannot be called an uptrend, and vice versa. Okay, so here on the chart, we can see, um, like in this uh, 
period, uh, like uh, um, Coinbase uh, had a little pullback uh, till its uh, day's moving average, right? And uh, since then, it made a new top. So we can see top, top, it's uh, the new top is higher than the old top. The new bottom here, Coinbase made a new bottom. But the new bottom is much higher than the old bottom. So the uh, so Coinbase uh, trend is still intact. Nothing has changed. It's still in an uptrend. And um, um, uh, so right now, this is a daily chart. If we look at the uh, weekly chart, here is a weekly chart. So a uh, weekly chart, um, it's also good. Uh, but here we see a small flaw. Uh, is, um, so, so it's very complicated to go over. Like if you guys are interested, you can learn more uh, with me and Ming because we're going to launch a tech, um, momentum trading course. But uh, basically here you see a number sign. Uh, it says seven, right? So this is uh, one of uh, 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 a very famous uh, uh, momentum trading sign. Um, so uh, I apologize here because uh, I learned most of my momentum trading course from uh, from my uh, Chinese uh, teachers. So like a lot of term I may not describe clearly, but basically uh, the numbers uh, where goes in a pattern, uh, and uh, if a uh, stock price um, go too fast to a certain level, uh, it would have a pullback. To, to, to a certain level, it will have a pullback, uh, especially for big uh, stocks, like a uh, stock with uh, um, a very high market uh, price because of the small ones, it may be manipulated by people, but the bigger it is, uh, it's harder to manipulate because it's such a big company, uh, like everyone's money in this uh, company's, uh, um, in this uh, stock is like a, a teardrop in ocean. So here, uh, you see every time the number nine sign comes, it would have a pullback. So here in the weekly chart, uh, Coinbase have two more weeks to go up until it have a new pullback. Okay, but but its daily chart looks very bullish. The the weekly chart, as you see, uh, this week it only touched the uh, five week moving average briefly. It only touched five week uh, moving average uh, very briefly because uh, um, for technical analysts, if uh, a stock keeps going up without touching the five day of uh, five day moving average, if you look at daily chart, uh, if you look at a weekly chart, if we, uh, if the stock keep going up without touching the five day of a five week moving average or just touch the five week moving average once, uh, it's considered very bullish. Okay, so if if, um, if you currently do not own um, Coinbase, uh, basically Coinbase uh, uh, chart patterns follow Bitcoin's chart pattern because uh, uh, the more active people trade the cryptocurrency, uh, mostly like trading Bitcoin, um, like Coinbase basically move again from the trading fees. So if, if you guys haven't uh, um, on Coinbase and uh, considering owning Coinbase, um, the, the 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 best opportunity is to wait right now because uh, Coinbase uh, will have a pullback uh, in around two weeks, uh, according to the uh, like uh, technical indicators. Uh, also, right now, if you, if we go back to the daily chart, uh, although it's in uptrend. Like it, you don't need to rush into um, Coinbase um, because we want to enter at a safe price instead of buying on the top. So uh, although right now it's very bullish um, and it made a two new top and the new bottom is higher than the old bottom, but uh, um, like go back to the $206.39, uh, to $212.24. Um, if it ever comes here, it, it would be a good uh, short-term opportunity to buy. Um, but if you are looking for a long-term 
more stable opportunity, uh, the best option is to buy at uh, around uh, 120 moving average. Because uh, one year have uh, uh, 365 days, but uh, uh, like Saturday and Sunday are not business days. So like uh, technically for trading days, uh, one year have 240 trading days roughly. And 120 days is half a year moving average. So if, if you look at the, this red line, yeah, can you guys see the red line? Yes. Hello? Yes. 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 Okay. Can you? Uh, so if you guys see this uh, red line, uh, and if you see the uh, gray, uh, gray line here, so that's around the. Uh, um, 2023 October, uh, end of October, um, you see here um, Coinbase breaked, uh, breaked from bottom uh, the uh, 120 days moving average. Uh, at that time, its price is around 76. So since then, you see it never touched 120 days moving average. Here it um, the price pulled back to be very, very close to the 120 day moving average, but it never break 120 days moving average. And uh, so this price is very, very safe because uh, um, if it ever touched 120 days moving average, because it's the average price, um, all the people entered into Coinbase in the last half a year. Um, so it's, uh, you know, everyone's uh, average cost um, like divide by how many shares they have. So uh, it have a very strong uh, power because if the price drop to the moving average, people will think about either holding or selling. And this is their uh, average price. It's just uh, like you buy any kind of item. When you bought it at $1,000, you don't want to sell at 1000 You want to sell at higher. But if the price ever touch your moving average, as a human being, you would think, uh, do I want to hold it or do I want to sell it? Um, the first time it ever touched uh, the moving average, most people would think to hold. This is uh, psychology. Um, th that's why um, like a, a lot of uh, successful momentum trader is also actually psychology. So this price here, the 120 days moving average for Coinbase right now is around the $139.91. And here we see there is also a gap up. The gap up is around 133.05 to $137.37. So this price is very close to the 120 days moving average. So um, in short, if you're looking for a very uh, safe, very, very safe uh, long-term opportunity, instead of buying right now, you should wait for the 140 level uh, for Coinbase. Um, and uh, we also uh, going to talk about Mara. Mara is the second biggest uh, um, cryptocurrency stock uh, in the um, US stock market, uh, aside from Coinbase. Um, but uh, we see here Mara's uh, uh, stock chart is quite different from Coinbase because Mara don't purely uh, like follow the cryptocurrency. Um, like Coinbase, uh, basically it make again from the trading fee every time people sell by cryptocurrency, but Mara is not like, he is like a cryptocurrency miner. Uh, and uh, within the last uh, one month, um, uh, like it issued more share. That's why each year was less and it have a pullback. Um, so previously I was thinking it would touch the 120 days moving average, uh, but now it's kind of stabilized. Now the price is above um, five day moving average and 10 days moving average. Um, so it has a uh, bounce back, but it's only a bounce back you cannot expect uh, Mara to hit the new top, $37.09. Uh, $37, um, the reason for that is uh, if you guys look at the MACD, which is a classic indicator. So MACD right now, the golden line, 
and uh, the blue line, if you guys see here, the golden line, the blue line is uh, below the zero line. They are all negatives. So if they are um, below zero, the number is negative. It means uh, uh, the shorting side, the people who are selling is uh, in power. Not too many buy, uh, people buying instead of uh, more people selling. So you cannot expect the stock to uh, go for a new high, at least not in short term. Um, so um, like here, uh, you guys can also see the short terms uh, moving average. Uh, so each line represent a, a moving average. Here, all the moving average kind of cloud together. Um, normally, this kind of uh, time is a time the stock would uh, determine the direction. Um, in in Mara's current stage, the highest it can go is around 24, which is it's a 60 days moving average. Uh, if you want to go higher, it's almost impossible right now. It, uh, um, like uh, it will have a pullback. It, it will certainly have a pullback. Uh, funny enough, funny enough, like uh, uh, on this candle, on this candle, uh, for the time limit, uh, like uh, I'm not going to show you guys because today, uh, like I actually catch code and uh, I cannot come to uh, the studio. Um, but me know, like uh, on this date, uh, which is uh, March 15th, uh, I did a uh, like uh, uh, analyst uh, of uh, um, Mara and I published uh, an article uh, and uh, the three days later, actually, Mara have a 60% increase. Um, so so uh, just a fun fact, okay. Um, and so right now, Mara's uh, um, pattern doesn't exactly follow Bitcoin. However, uh, if you want to go for long-term for Mara, if we go for the weekly chart, uh, Mara is still bullish. We can see here, it uh, made a new top, uh, like a weekly top. And uh, here, Mara, in the past one week, it touched uh, the 20-week uh, moving average. We see the previous week, uh, actually, Mara almost break the 20 days uh, moving average, uh, to 20 week moving average. So it's very dangerous in the previous week. However, Mara's this week's uh, um, it, 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 you know, it made a comeback basically. Uh, this week's volume is higher than the more people trading, meaning the uh, number is more representative. So you see, right now it's stand on top of uh, 20 days uh, moving, uh, 20 week moving average. So we can expect a short term, like very short term um, bounce back. But uh, because uh, you see here, the candle is very big. And also here, although uh, here, uh, uh, here the wick is very strong on the top. So um, my conclusion here is uh, Mara, you can expect a, a bounce back to like $24 level. So around 15%, but you cannot expect it to uh, break the uh, old top, which is $34. Um, and uh, I know a lot of people are, uh, a lot of people are paying attention to um, like NVIDIA. One second. Can you guys uh, see, uh, see, see the chart now, NVIDIA? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, this year's uh, uh, stock market, US stock market is very different from the previous years. So as you guys know, um, you know, in the past four and a half months, um, the, like the, uh, the US uh, stock market keep going up, but a lot of uh, blue chip companies, their, uh, their stock price actually dropped very heavily, like uh, Apple. Apple dropped 4% um, in, uh, in, in this, uh, on the past Thursday. I mean, 4% for Apple is huge. Um, and uh, um, like a lot of stock actually um, like dropped a lot, uh, but the stock market, the, the index 
keep going up, keep uh, breaking new high. The reason for that is Nvidia. So all the money went to the AI sec uh, segment and uh, the cryptocurrency sectors. So um, like all the money basically lived the traditional um, segments like Apple, Google. If you see their chart, they the stock price dropped heavily, heavily, um, because all the money left the traditional blue chip company and all went into Nvidia. Nvidia went up sixty percent um, since the last November. I mean, Nvidia is a huge company. Um, like for it to go up this much, it also means all the money come to him. Um, so one. Um, like oh, the, this year's biggest question is when can I go in for Nvidia? I think a lot of people are uh, asking for themselves or asking their friends, right? Uh, I mean, um, well, I mean, all the people coming here, uh, of course, you guys are interested in cryptocurrency, but I believe a lot of people are also interested in AI because AI is a big topic um, this year. So right now, I can tell you guys, right now is not a safe time to enter. Okay. So if you guys ever see this candle here, so uh, on March 8, on March 8, uh, it has a very big, uh, uh, like falling candle. Uh, I apologize here uh, because of my setup. Uh, like you can change your setup uh, as you like. So here, uh, green color is actually um, the, the price falling. Like red co color is uh, uh, price rising. Uh, I know in Northern America, most people set up the uh, chart as green as going up, red as going down. But actually, here is reverse. Um, it's it's just because when I uh, learned the momentum trading from my uh, teachers, most of my teachers they are Chinese momentum traders, and they are used to set up the red candles up, uh, green candles down, okay? Um, back to our topic. So if you guys see March 8, um, the, the candle is very, very long in comparison with other candles. And you see the volume is actually very big. It's the uh, biggest volume ever since uh, November. The bigger the volume is, is uh, like uh, the more representative uh, the, the, the number is. So, um, for, for, for example, um, like uh, if in this universe, in, if on this earth, um, uh, Idris Zabai Queen have uh, uh, 10 pieces of unique uh, jewelry, I mean, the jewelry looks identical and it has a historical meaning, okay? And uh, each piece uh, in the beginning was around, uh, uh, say, 100 million, right? There's only 10 piece in the world. So uh, the market price for this jewelry, for those 10 piece jewelry is based on the trading history of this jewelry. So if only one piece is traded at 100 million, then this year, this jewelry worth 100 million. But if uh, next year people say this is actually a fake jewelry or this actually isn't, uh, uh, doesn't have any historical meaning, Five people sold this jewelry at uh, 90 million. Do you think uh, uh, the, the jewelry will keep uh, going up in value or keep going down? It will keep going down because the five people selling is more representative than one people buying. So uh, like one uh, item, like the stock price is just like uh, everything in our daily life. It's actually based on supply and demand. So if the supply is stronger, the price will go up. If the supply, uh, if the demand is low, the price would go down. It's the same thing, um, like to put it simple. So if uh, the volume is bigger, it means uh, the number is more representative. This volume is uh, the biggest since November. So it will make uh, Nvidia very hard to break through the $974, although the NVIDIA is at $942. If you buy it right, uh, right now, you will have a very big risk of buying on the top. 
So, um, so the safest uh, opportunity, uh, the safest uh, um, uh, place to buy. Uh, I mean, this, this is just a small gift, small bonus for everyone who joined the, today's event. Okay, because I think a lot of people will be interested in Nvidia and are considering buying Nvidia when the uh, price have a pullback. So the best time, the the the, the best uh, um, um, place, the, the the price point to buy Nvidia is uh, in between six hundred eighty eight dollar to seven hundred forty two dollar sixteen cents. So it's just like the one you see, uh, you guys see on the screen. So it's a six hundred eighty eight point eighty four. Uh, till uh, $742. So the reason for that, it, uh, it has multiple, um, multiple uh, like resistance at this level. First, you guys see the green line. The green line is a 100 days moving average. It's uh, uh, the last 100 days people's average price. That's uh, uh, reason number one. It never breaks the 100 uh, moving the uh, um, 100 day moving average. Second, the gap up, the gap up uh, here, which is the area I told you guys, uh, is uh, basically gap up means uh, people never traded at this price. What it means is uh, it, it's just like uh, um, maybe one day, like you go back home, like as a child, and your father all of a sudden says, uh, Hey son, I found a um, a piece of uh, um, you know last uh, uh, the seventeenth century queen's uh, uh, queen's crown from um, your grandfather's uh, um, backyard, the backyard, and uh, I saw on news it's the only one piece uh, in the world. Okay, imagine just imagine it's a true. I know it's ridiculous. But imagine it's true, okay? Do you think you are sell at ten dollar? Do you think you are sell at one hundred dollar or one million? No, this crowd will never trade it at one dollar, one hundred dollar, one million. It will start at ten million or something. So this uh, price uh, price point from zero to one hundred million, no one ever bought it. No one ever traded in the history. This is called gap up. So even later, uh, you know, after someone bought it, another people bought the crow, the only one piece, seven century king's uh, crow uh, from you. He bought at 100 million, okay? And later he uh, bankrupted. He sold the crow. He sold the crow. But do you think he will sell at $10 or $100? No, even he, he is in financial difficulty. He sells this crow uh, at a discount. He will sell at uh, um, like 90 million something. He won't uh, sell at cheap. This is the logic of a gap up. So basically, because uh, uh, the, um, you know, people see the value in the stock or see the uh, value in an item, uh, there's a certain area the stock never traded in this price, it's just you know all of a sudden from um, the previous day, because the item people realize it's precious, all of a sudden they traded from you know for example one hundred dollars to one thousand per piece. Uh, so this area is very very hard to break. So it uh, if uh, the stock ever dropped to this area uh, around six hundred eighty eight point eighty four to 742 it's a buy because uh, this gap is so big it's almost a a five percent gap up i mean for nvidia uh, like it's a huge company uh nvidia's five percent is uh very big because it's uh, like a 50 uh, it's a uh, like several trillion dollar company like five percent gap up is huge so it's almost impossible for NVIDIA to up short term. So this year, um, if you want to buy NVIDIA at a safe price, uh, the best price zone is uh, in between the 688 till the 400, uh, 742. 
Okay. And uh, my last topic uh, is about um, uh, the Bitcoin trend. Sorry. Let me switch to your platform. Uh, can you guys see uh, the trading? Can, can you see the new, new screen? No, the same window. Hello? Oh, the new screen. Hmm. Yeah, the new screen. Uh, can you see the new screen? Uh, it becomes white. Yes. The, the back Just screen. Can you see it? One second. One second. Let me screen share again. One moment. One moment. One moment. No, it's there here. No, it's a part of the zoom. Here. Yeah. Can you guys see now? Yeah, l let me know if uh, yeah, oh, okay. you guys can see it. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. We can, uh, sorry. Uh, we can yeah, because most of the time, yeah, most of the time I use uh, um, uh, Futu, uh, Futu Ball, because Futu is uh, one of the most powerful trading platform I, I have ever seen. Uh, like personally, I have more than 60 indicators um, added on Futu. Um, so I don't use the uh, other platform much, but Futu have uh, one big uh, disadvantage is uh, on Futu, you cannot see cryptocurrency. You can see cryptocurrency stock, but you cannot see the trend of cryptocurrency. Um, so right now we switch to trading view. Um, so this is a, a chart for a Bitcoin uh, in USD. So right now we can see um, uh, like uh, Bitcoin uh, is uh, having a pullback right now, okay? Uh, and uh, but but uh, crypto uh, currencies MACD corresponding MACD is still above zero. It's still above the zero line. Above the zero line means uh, the buying power is in control. Although it's having a pullback, the buying power is still in control in, in dominant place. <coughs> and uh, um, here I draw a small line, the small trade line here. If you guys see the blue line, yeah. So the, the trade line, um, most of the time we draw uh, with uh, the two bottom, two most recent bottom or two more recent uh, um, top. Uh, I don't like to draw lines with the top because uh, the top may not follow the trade line. But um, a lot of time people look at the, um, the trade line uh, made with the bottom. Okay. So we see here um, for for cryptocurrency um, on March twentieth, so which is three days ago, um, cryptocurrency uh, Bitcoin and uh, the trend is a little bit dangerous. Um, uh, on March twentieth, the so at this time it has a, a pullback. The, the the pullback is actually quite big. And it almost breaks the trend line. It almost breaks the trade line. But uh, um, like when the market closed, before the market closed, um, uh, like it comes back. Right now, um, well, right now the, uh, the the Bitcoin um, price um, break the short term trend line. So you see, it, the current price is actually below the ten day moving average. 10 day moving average. So like we, we, we uh, I think it will have a further pullback. Um, so here it's a little bit hard to predict how it will goes. But one thing we can, um, you, you, we need to know here is uh, it cannot break uh, um, the low of uh, 60, uh, Six zero seven six zero. So, which is the lowest point of this candle? So, if uh, Bitcoin ever uh, break below sixty um, k, 
760, it will make a new low. It means a further pullback. So in the next few days, it cannot touch this point. If it ever touch, um, as I told you guys, like, uh, you know, the most important thing in momentum trading is to identify a trend. Identify a trend, meaning you need to distinguish if it's uptrend, uh, lower trend, or uh, if the stock is uh, in between choosing direction. So if it ever breaks this low, it means uh, uh, two lows. The new low is high, uh, the new low is lower than the previous low. It's a downtrend. So like in the next few days, Bitcoin cannot break the 60K, 760. Otherwise it will have a po further pullback. Um, but however, because uh, the MACD indicator is uh, below the zero line, it means uh, um, like uh, right now in the market, the buying power is in control. Uh, so we can still safely assume um, like, uh, like it won't have a, a big pullback, but uh, we uh, we need to know like uh, there's a uh, there's risk of a further pullback. It cannot break this uh, trend line, blue trend line, and also it cannot break the sixty seven hundred sixty. Otherwise, it's likely to go to this green line. The green line, I think, is uh, one. Sorry, one second. The the green line is. Uh, the 60 days is moving average uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, so that's around the... Uh, uh, yeah, that's around the 50K, uh, 376 points. So it cannot break the, uh, the this trend line. Otherwise, uh, the Bitcoin have a risk. If it ever drop below um, the 60K, 760 would have a risk of going to the uh, 55k uh, 376 point yeah and uh, I, I think uh, I go over most of the um, you know key uh, key cryptocurrency stock and uh, Bitcoin trend with you guys and uh, maybe I can shift uh, um, the speech to the next speaker. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Um, yeah. So we're, we're gonna have to catch up. Uh, next one, we'll, we'll like to invest crypto. Ed. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Danny. Okay. All right. Can I get my slides? Okay. Oh, okay. Get my slides. While they're getting that ready, I'm gonna. Uh, we already heard an introduction of Ed. I just want to say I met Ed when it was lucky for me for 2016. And we shared the same philosophy. We want to help others from avoid the pain that we learned the hard way. And if that means we're also going to warn people about the stuff that they should be avoiding that's out there because there's a lot of garbage. We were, I, I have the same uh, values as him in terms of teaching people what is bad, what it should be stayed away from. And there's plenty of that to go around, especially in the early days of crypto, 2016, 2017, 2018. So I love working with Ed for that value that, He's not about making a quick buck. He's worried about more people not losing money. So thanks, Ed, for showing up. Here. All right. Thank you, Robert. Um, hey, everybody. So, yeah, Crypto Ed. Crypto Ed. I'm excited to show you my uh, NFT journey. So uh, just for starters, I want to see, like, how many of you guys are currently, like, uh, like you guys know what NFTs are? How many of you guys know, like, uh, Aside from like a JPEG monkey on the internet, like, <laughs> can someone define what an NFT is? Non fungible token, right? Right. So non fungible token is basically it's a token, but this for this case would be like an electronic item, right? That is non fungible. Like you can't like it's not a. It's not the same as B, right? Or like whatever Robert has is not the same as what uh, Joy has over there, right? So that's what NFTs are, right? You can think of it as like an example is like a baseball cards, right? You may say, yeah, but they look the same. And you have like a Michael Jordan on them, but not every one of them. If I take a Michael Jordan and like it's bent, right? Is it the same as one that's like in mint condition? No. So that's, so that is like a bit of what NFTs are. Like if you don't understand, and I'm going to share with you my experience, like in the NFT journey, um, just to be clear, I'm not like a, uh, yeah, I'm not like a financial professional. I'm not an advisor. So I'm just sharing with you my journey. Uh, most likely a journey of like my ups and downs and 
if you do want to get into this, right, um, just do your own research and find some. And I speak to a uh, professional on this, right? This is just me sharing my story. So my crypto journey, I've been around crypto since 2014. I've made every single kind of mistake that you could make in the space, right? In the crypto space, we use the term, you got robbed or you got wrecked, right? And I had to start over again. Like everything from like keeping your coins on the exchange and then the exchange just disappeared and walked away to all the way to like getting in a project that you think it's going to go take off, but it never took off, right? And yeah, so I've, I've also, uh, I was the, also the host of the conference, CoinFest conference for, uh, for the online, um, online location. I, at first I was skeptical. I missed the empty boat. Oops. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. I missed the empty boat at first. I thought, okay, like, this is silly. Like, why would I pay, like, people pay so much just for, like, a JPEG on the internet, right? Eventually, the, uh, that JPEG internet went to become, like, a, like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I've heard of stories that were, like, somebody was willing to sell his house in Vancouver for four monkeys. Four, like, so that's how digital crazy. monkeys. Four digital yeah, monkeys. Not even real monkeys. Yeah, like, 40 yacht club, right? <laughs> and... And there's a lot of um, excitement in this, right? Um, for myself, I'm not a dev. I'm not. I don't do. This, I don't have a computer science degree. I, uh, but I feel that I. This is something I have to get into. So I decided to learn. I decided to like uh, spend a lot of time just watching YouTube, going to meetups, finding out like how can I get in on this? How can I be building? Right? Because I do feel that there is a lot. If you can provide value, you can build in this, right? It's, there's a lot more than you can then just like buying and selling. I like to call myself a reform moon boy or degen. I used to be crazy about price, buy like when everyone's buying and then sell when everybody's selling. Oftentimes it ends up being like you buy high and sell low. So I learned that um you can learn like there are stuff you can learn like techniques and stuff, right? You Robert who teaches stuff like this. Right? I think we had Danny who was teaching how to do trading, and so there's a lot. Like, about stuff in the crypto so you can learn and that's a nice thing like we all have the capacity to learn doesn't matter how old you are or, or how little you know you can become really you can become good over time um so yeah so i'd like to share uh this is something i put together like this was like uh, a few years ago like uh my background was actually in design right so i designed like education materials like stuff like this right where i talk about ways that people can like uh make mistakes in the crypto space um i can probably share more uh in the future but you can see like i've made like, every single one of these like everything from like keeping coins on the exchange and they disappear right or they got hacked not using like a hardware drive device right um you also have like uh this like having like bad passwords or just being emotional when you're trading but right so a bit about a uh, chain affiliation disclaimer um i'm not a bitcoin maxi i'm not someone who say oh i don't like bitcoin i do feel that um there are a lot of uh, networks out there, a lot of opportunities to learn. And I do feel that if you only buy Bitcoin, you're no different than like someone like uh, Peter Schiff, right? Someone who's like a gold bug who says, I only buy gold. I don't care about stocks. I do feel that um, there are uh, there are different chain, different networks out there. And each of these are trying to disrupt or bring about change, transformation in a different area. You have like Ethereum, they want to be the, uh, the decentralized computing network right so so they are out to eat amazon's lunch like amazon um, cloud by like aws they want to create like a decentralized computing system right you have like a network like finance smart chain right they are trying to come up with like financial solutions right avalanche was the network that started off wanting to disrupt um the legal space where they they wanted people to do like uh they call it initial lit litigation offering where people can participate in a lawsuit, you can fund the lawsuit, pay for the lawyer, and if you win, they'll distribute the winnings to um, all the participants. And of course, just like any participation, you know that there are risks that if you lose a lawsuit, right, uh, all the participants, right, they don't get anything. All right, so I'm all about utility. I do feel that for every network, if there's utility, if there's use cases, it can grow, it can become big, right? So I like to say I'm big on utility, I'm big on community, and yeah, currently I am mostly on the Avalanche network. I'm also like giving, exploring the whole Solano Solano ecosystem, which so I just exceeded it. Which you guys may have heard a lot about, like Solano going up value, and it's because there's a lot of people, a lot of users, a lot of uh, users, right? A lot of users and a lot of uh, like things being built, just like how um, uh, why Google is popular, right? Because you have a lot of people using Google, searching on Google. Right? At the end of the day, 
it's about where the users are, where the audience are. Right? Um, so yeah, I started off as a collector, right? I bought like, I jumped into all sorts of different projects, right? Uh, I also um, offered to do design for different projects as a, as a, as a contractor, right? I did like, I, was, I moderated for different forums and so on, uh, but it was a lot of work. And it, it was a lot of work, and also the pay wasn't really that great. Uh, like compared to like you, so for a project like uh, you did a design for, they pay you like a, a thousand, two thousand for the artwork, and then they'll turn around and sell, do like their launch, the NFT launch, and make like two million, three million, four million dollars. That's when I noticed that like, hey, like I'm on the wrong side. I'm doing the wrong stuff in this space, right? But also to be aware that in the NFT space, right, there are also a lot of scam projects out there too, right? Just because like the monkey or maybe for this case like someone was selling these some um, lamborghini avax lambo right ugly lambos they have, that sold actually like they sold about like a i think about like a twenty thousand dollars right just because like, it's an empty doesn't mean that you have to buy into it right you have to i personally i do tell people to look into the utility like what are they promising but going beyond the, for what they promise is what have they delivered so far or what have they delivered with past projects if you cannot tell who's a team, right? If they call this an anonymous team, right? You have to like take that into consideration. Like, is it worth jumping into it, right? And of course, you also have like a, you may have heard the term um, play to earn, right? These are like uh, games where you play and then um, if you play enough, you earn. Um, the one of the biggest example, I'm um, actually before I say example, I just want to see any, can anybody give an example of a play to earn? They may have heard it. So, so one of the, um, I haven't heard of that, but the one I would like to share is actually what I call Axie Infinity. So mm -hmm. this was a game that was popular in the Philippines, right? Uh, because people in the Philippines they were buying these um, like Pokemon looking like monsters, mm -hmm. and they're sending them out to like fight, right? And if they win, they earn these like tokens that they can sell for real life money. Well, well before real life money, we would sell for Ethereum, Bitcoin, then they trade to real life money. At, at one point, some of these people were making like like two thousand dollars like per month, so it's, it could support like someone's like full time incomes. And there were a lot of these people; they would buy a lot of these, and then they'll like rent them out to like gamers in the Philippines. So they'll take like half of it, and then the gamers will, and they, all they do is like click, fight, click, fight, click, and fight, like for like a whole day, like every day, like for eight hours. And then there's like a night shift person that continues, and then like day shift again. So, but um, yeah, but there's uh, there was an economy and it was good until the money stopped flowing in, until like people stopped buying these stuff. So it was, and, and then it turned out to like a pyramid scheme, but it was masked with like a gaming type of look, right? So I was keen on, I want to, I want to build a project that is unique, that is original and something I'm passionate about, right? Um, but the problem is I'm not a developer. I'm not an... I'm not like a, like those artists like a, like these artworks right here, right? I can do like digital art, which some people think is not real artwork, right? And I'm not an influencer, but I was willing to learn. I put in an hour or two every day. I listen to YouTubers. I listen to, I follow tutorials. I follow along on um, different tutorials, such as um, CryptoZombies.io. That's a good website to learn how blockchain works, right? I read like through like hundreds of like white papers to see like how a project works how the token flow works right i've done i've learned a bit about coding and it helped a lot more when chat gbt came out right that's when you can get it to teach you right so the first project i did was called bubble tea avax bubble tea where i gave away these bubble tea it's it's a pretty cute uh, silly little project i just put it out there and i made like and it was also a good like learn learn along like code along thing i was following tutorial and i made this put it out there and then like people people just uh just claim their own way and and then they started trading it on there but i learned that i learned that if only i had put a, like a, a taxi or transaction fee on it i could be making a lot i didn't it was my first project and i missed out but i treat it as a learning experience right uh and also you also learn that you have to set um you have to set up on uh, like different rules such as like only one person can download per nft because there were people who like got their nft and then they come back and do it claim another one they claim like 20 30 of these 
right? And also you have to learn about partnerships, how to build partnerships with other projects so that you can get build hype and get a lot of uh, users and such. Here's another one I did. Uh, this is when like AI art first came out on um, DALI. I thought um, about, hey, I, let's do a story about like a robot from, um, you guys may know about like Boston Dynamics. Um, back in the days, um, like, there was this like YouTube video about these um, robots that were getting abused. Like people were like pushing it, like using a hockey stick to make uh, to make it uh, not accomplish its task. So I thought, okay, why don't we make a story with this, right? And I did also another collection, right? A unique collection of a hundred AI art of a robot escaping from like human, uh, like human um, captors and trying to like find meaning and such. So I gave away a lot of that. Uh, so that was a fun project I did. Here's another one I did too, where I was working with an artist and I'm a digital, digital artist, right? Where we love the idea of um, this building and such. Um, I love uh, real estate. I love um, also just um, a, a bit of comedy. You can see right here, it doesn't say McDonald's, it says McBlockies. So, so I like, um, I love humor and I, and this was like one collection I put together. I right? mean, put out there, uh, we, we raised quite a bit. Uh, this, this, uh, this is a more of a humor project, right? But, but keeping which we didn't promise anything, right? It was just humor and, and it was a fun project we did. And the nice thing is um, every NFT we had was unique. So you couldn't, there would never be like two, right? Make blockies, right? But but you can see like, uh, yeah, we had our own, uh, this was a fun one, um, Remax, so we call it Rec. <laughs> right. But yeah, but but right now, and a lot of these are just like artistic collection, right? We do have plans where we want to take these and start giving them utility. And this is how we can take these like uh, balloons and like restaurants, like digital art restaurant to be more than just a JPEG, right? The difference between what we have versus like what someone can just do a right click and save is you can't take a right click and save and and feed it to feed it to a game right just as how you can't just take a like a, a photoshop picture of like a passport and try to cross the border with that good luck with that hey <laughs> you try to do that you can get detained the same way we have like we are working on a game where imagine if you can take these uh buildings i don't know can i get this to play but but we are working on a game in the background right? where like if you own like rooms you can actually like feed the rooms to your uh, apartment build complex and every month you can collect rent every month you get rent uh of course um this is rent is just a token called rent r-e-n-t token um how much it is is depending on what the market's value because we are not a security right but we have a game for that, right? And if someone tries to do like copy this, right? Oh, we'll do like right click and copy. They can't take the picture and feed it to a game. A game would say, this is not yeah, an authentic way to NFT, right? And so this is where like the power of NFT comes to play, right? Where only NFTs from, um, from uh, that's from, uh, that's minted by um, the offer, right? Or the game developer is accepted. And this is uh, the feature we're working on, right? And yeah, so we have a, we have a lot of plans for this game that we're building and we're excited about where it could go. And and it could be a huge uh, ecosystem, right? As I say, right now it's a dream, right? Uh, and then um, here are other collections that have launched in the past too, right? We have like, we did like a squid game type of thing. We also did like a Wordle. You guys remember Wordle when it first came out? Mm -hmm. We also did like uh, characters and such, right? Uh, this was like a, a friend of mine, he wanted to do it. Uh, he wanted to take like Wordle uh, the difference is if you get your word right you earn that like you earn crypto and if you let's say you run out of turns right you can pay you can pay uh with uh i can't remember the, you had a different it was a different coin right it wasn't word it was like a play onward of word where you can pay that token to get like another life to continue so that was a fun like play to earn experience and then yeah so we have a lot of things coming together so but this is just a quick brief snapshot of my empty journey right um i'm not someone who's saying that oh i have a lambo or a mansion I'm, I'm just telling you a story just a regular guy who's learning this experience and hopefully uh in the next pro one right we can uh see some um we can see some excitement uh and such right i'm a hodler i went from a hodler to a builder i'm excited about where blockchain could go and where web3 can go and i'm also i'm um, starting a com community of people who are like fellow learners, right? Um, but yeah, but before I jump further, I'm um, just to remind everyone, not soliciting anything, I'm just telling you my journey, 
not a financial uh, uh, advice, right? Not a financial professional. Do your own research. But yeah, I'm right now huge wealth building communities. I'm actually working with Robert. Uh, we're building, like, we're uh, trying to like uh, build like communities and content, right? In um and in, in some of the neighborhoods that are underserved, such as um outside of downtown and stuff. So if you are like from Burnaby, Tri Cities, and Surrey, we'd love to like get you guys to get to see like what kind of community you can build together. Uh, because there's just a lot of people who are curious about crypto. And I can imagine like in about in about a few months, uh, when Bitcoin goes up to hundred K, right? It could be um like there will be a lot of people rushing in and I'm sure like like we we need to have like more community. Like uh, this room is big, but we'll need a bigger room than this. And maybe like lots of different places. Like maybe you could you talk about like, having like more like TSA Bitcoin locations in other parts of Metro Vancouver, but there will be a She's trying to make a, this a franchise. Yeah, we can talk more about it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so some topics I'm excited about. Well, I think people should learn, right? Going from like all, everything from like decentralized finance, blockchain gaming, using hardware wallet. There's just a lot in this space that we should all learn about. And I do recommend everyone to pick up these skills, right? Because if you don't learn these, right? You, you're going to make the same mistakes I've made. So yeah, a bit about myself, uh, my Twitter account, my projects, and then um, yeah, so that's my presentation. So okay, we're gonna do a Q and A a little bit later. But okay. Robert, you want to wrap it up on the yeah, trading side? I'll do a really quick there. one. But yeah. uh, before I do, I just want to say Ed also came up with the first idea I've heard of, which was tokenizing real estate. When he had the idea before all these other apps that are already out there. Yeah. Before they even existed, he was talking about yeah. doing that. So he's always doing his project. Yeah. Real, real world assets. Real world assets. Asset. Yeah. Okay, he was already now. talking about yeah. it. Because we're on top of the regulatory yeah. environment, even yeah. before the regulators knew yeah. what they were going to do, yeah. we knew that they're going to start regulating tokenization of yeah. everything digitally. So he's always ahead yeah. of the curve. And that's why I like always sharing ideas with yeah. uh, Ed and stuff. And, you know, we're, we're with Melanie, even part of the first uh, transaction was in West Van for a Bitcoin sale. Right, I remember that was a long time. I don't even remember how long ago that was. We, seven years ago. Right, seven years ago, a property being sold for Bitcoin. The Melanie was involved in the discussion. So, and also the first crypto book in Vancouver. Yeah, we did a crypto cruise. There was about 150 yeah. people. On I was there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's great to be around the people who are cutting edge and not <laughs> being <laughs> Imagine what that discussion would like. Three monkeys for my house. No, I Now. Yeah, no, no. And I believe would be let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So it's you know, technology, we've got trading, we got living everything. I'm gonna shows us how much money people are making. Uh, I'm actually going to blow this up. Um, bigger. So um, basically what you see here every 10 years, how much money people are making in general. And this decade, which started four years ago, almost, uh, is actually ahead of schedule. So there's a lot of capital out there in the system. Uh, however, there's also a lot of credit card debt. <laughs> And that debt is starting to default. 
So I, I'm known as a trader, but why do I talk about, you know, like we, we had a momentum trader on earlier, yet he's already talking about price action and candles and indicators talking about where is the support level. And that's actually technical analysis that I actually is my favorite, but I also do fundamental analysis as well as sentimental analysis and geopolitical analysis. What are the regulators doing? What are central banks doing? So who can tell me if the credit card debt continues to be defaulted on, is that a good sign or a bad sign for the US economy, right? Maybe they're going to be taking money out of the stocks, putting it into somewhere else, maybe Bitcoin, who knows? Now, the problem isn't so much the default is starting to pick up. By the way, I predicted three recessions, not one, not two, three times a year before the recession began. Okay. So I, I yeah. Sorry. You forgot technical analysis. Yeah, yeah, I did. But the point is that I predicted these crashes. Why? Because I know what to look for. I lost money like Ed in the first one, the tech bubble crash. Then I learned the warning signs, what to look out for. And the interest rate now on credit card debt has never been this high. So when you start having those defaults combined with that uh, interest rate, there's basically, I'm gonna be putting on a presentation that's gonna be called the top 100 reasons why I see a market crash around the corner like yesterday. Okay, so as soon as possible, I'm gonna be throwing that up on a, a we'll, we'll make a landing page, a course, and we'll talk about anyone that wants to see it, it'll be free just to see that uh, 100 slides. Uh, yeah, we can see what banks are doing with their capital. Are they lending to real estate? Now, we've mentioned real estate a few times. We'll get back to that. Because if they take away money for offices, commercial real estate, that could be a big problem for banks. We know now, uh, those of you that were here a couple weeks ago, we warned about the bank term funding programs now done. It's rest in peace. So banks, if they go bankrupt tomorrow, they have nowhere to get their money from and, and other than being bought out by another bank, which will scare people in the market. By the way, in Canada last week, they just announced actually yesterday, OFSI, which is the regulator for banks, said they're no longer allowing banks to lend to people uh, for mortgages for real estate more than 4.5 times their income. Is that a problem for West Vancouver, which is like the most expensive in Canada, where on average is 12, 13, 14, 15 times the person's average income, the price of a property? Where is the demand going to keep coming to sustain that? I'm right now buying in cities that are three and a half times the annual income of a person. So I'm, I'm doing real estate, by the way. Uh, I've got a long track record with that too. But businesses are not hiring. They're, they're uh, responsible for actually 60% of all the jobs in Canada. They're slowing down rapidly uh, with hiring. Once we start getting unemployment up, that's going to hurt also stocks. Uh, valuations of stocks in the U.S. are 21.1 on this screen, but it's actually, um, this is a P.E. ratio. So this is basically saying uh, historically it's starting to get up there higher than what it's normally been. And USA is higher than the rest of the world. So if you're going to choose where to park your money, you want to go where, you know, if we start a company today to, together, our PE ratio is basically 1.0. You put in a dollar, it takes one year to turn it into $2. But these companies, they need 23 years to take $1 to turn it into $2 in their current income. Uh, people are, okay, now here's the funny thing. Who knows any influencer, Ed may know, on YouTube that was saying three to six months ago, we're going to have a recession. We're going to have a crash. This is not normal. When I, when I predicted crashes the prior two times, there was no sign of a recession. People thought I was nuts. I was literally at Holiday Inn Metro Town on stage. Two people got up and left because they thought I was crazy. It was 2007. Real estate had been going up like crazy in Vancouver. Stocks were going up like crazy. They said, what are you talking about? And there was no sign of a recession. I said, exactly. That's why you're all about to get burned. And that's when that was my first prediction of a recession. Actually, I was predicting a depression, but they saved Lehman Brothers. So now, when six months ago, everyone was predicting recession on YouTube, I was like, you know, that's a missing ingredient. We need people to be caught off guard. Right? With, with Ed, I've attended a lot of his events, and people, whenever they started saying, for sure, something's going to go up, I put my hand up. I said, okay, I think that's time to sell. 
who ended up being right most of the time, if not all of them, right? So I use that as an indicator. So now six months ago when everyone was bearish, I said, hmm, I got to maybe reconsider my position because when things start to go down, there needs to be a panic when people are caught off guard. But if they're all predicting it, how are they going to be not anticipating that? So here we now see, we now have this ingredient where everyone is bullish, including people that would just, you'll meet on the street, they'll tell you, buy NVIDIA and just keep it forever. It's got to go up, even no matter what the price is. However, we're starting to see signs of people saying that there's going to be no landing. First, there was talk of a hard landing, meaning crash off a cliff, then a slow, soft landing like an airplane. And now they're even starting to talk about, oh, no, there's not going to be a crash. There's not going to be a decline even. More and more people are talking about that. Does that make me excited? That means more and more people think that everything's A-OK, -okay, perfect, can't go wrong, can only get better. And that makes me ready to now pull the trigger on exiting. Remember, you want to be saying buy, buy, buy when everyone's buying, buying, buying. Do the opposite. Most of the time, you'll do well. So here's the current chart that might interest you. This is about a week late now two weeks late so instead of 90 days we are now about 98 days since we've had a five percent crash in the stock market we've been looking at the charts last time they're just straight up and it's right here it's actually not 5165 it's already 5260 almost uh, another 100 points higher so what this means is every 67 days and this is business days this is not counting weekends so that's actually more than three and a half. That's like three and a half months. Every three and a half months, we're supposed to have a 5% crash in the markets. I'm talking about S&P 500 US market. And we're actually at 98 days. Long overdue for a 5% correction. So Ed already is buying put options that you see. And uh, so here is a 10% crash and 20% crash. So those are not overdue. Uh, you can see they still have a quite a ways to go, but the 5% one is definitely here. So that's supporting my, uh, I would call it a thesis because it's like a science. Trading is like an art and a science at the same time. Here is a heat map. So I, I'm a numbers guy. And this basically tells us how many companies are hitting new, brand new, 52 week highs and brand new 52 week lows. You can see a lot of companies hitting new highs, not so many hitting lows. That's, a, that's something where you've heard Warren Buffett say, be fearful when people are greedy. Be fearful when people are greedy. Right now, they're greedy. Uh, this is something that I like to do. As, this is probably one of my top secrets. I'm sharing with you guys for being here uh, today and online. You basically don't just take a chart and because I'm going to get to the next chart that shows ratios between two different things to look for value. Because price is not value. Just because something has gone up like crazy doesn't mean that it's going to keep going up. It actually means it's too late to get in on the party. I like to get in when no one wants it. That's a ratio. This is different. This is just comparing how did the stock market move? And it's not comparing it today, different things. It's comparing the same thing to itself over different periods. And so what this shows is uh, 1960 to 1961, 1995 to 1995, uh, January to December. It basically takes several different bull runs and overlaps them because it can give traders like myself and institutional traders who control a lot of money do this a hint. Are we ahead of schedule? Are we behind schedule? Right now, we're at the black line. You can see right here. So with the show of hands, who believes that this black line has gone up a little bit ahead of schedule. Okay, who thinks it's gone be be uh, below schedule? This black line. So basically what this means is uh, counting the number of days from the beginning of the bull run. It's actually gone up quite steeply. There's only a couple times, uh, actually never, that has been higher We're at this point of time. All of the other scenarios were lower than where we currently are. Even the next three months, the best case scenario I can see here would be sideways. 
best case scenario. What about the worst case? All the way down here. Just to stay within the typical movement of the past. So long story short, you know, I compare a lot of different things. These are now different sectors. Now, these are all at the same time. This is just last week showing different sectors. You've got the names up here showing which ones are doing well. You can see sometimes when they're behind schedule, they, they catch up. So you can find what is good value. This is what I call a ratio that I compare things to, like gold and silver or U.S. oil and U.K. oil or Bitcoin, Ethereum. You can do a lot of different things like that. Now, I agree with uh, the speaker earlier who said that semiconductors are the hype right now. Even though the markets have been dropping, the semiconductors alone have made the stock market hit a record high. So I thought I'm going to share with you guys a bonus. I'm going to give you a hint of what I saw 25 years ago when we had the tech bubble crash. But first we had the tech bubble, which was the most like insane bubble other than maybe the tulip mania that people can remember in recent history. And what was that predicated upon was the technology bubble. So what were the companies involved? Cisco Systems, the ones that make the routers that we're using. And so basically, I want to give you this bonus that says there's three waves during a tech bubble. We sort of have one with the semiconductors, which was like Cisco Systems. And um, we all we can check what happened with those charts. But long story short, we start with the hardware, the, the computers that you can touch. We're at that stage now. That's what NVIDIA is. Okay, it's the new Cisco systems. What's coming is we're going to have the devices and the infrastructure. Okay, so the companies that let you access um, that technology. And then finally, there'll be the software. The people that can figure out how to use AI to actually do something. Because right now, it's just saying, oh, I do AI. But what is that? Does it have a utility, an actual use? Not quite there yet but it's coming so i'm bearish on the market but i'm keeping my eye closely on this and uh with real estate just know that there's a lot of problems going on right now with renewing of mortgages office mortgages renewing this year 2024 20 percent of commercial real estate loans are offices <coughs> and this this pie chart shows the interest rate at which they're uh currently at so basically, 90% of these mortgages were really low rates. They're going to be re resetting at 7%, not 2%. It's going to be a big shock to the markets. But uh, we, I heard today someone talking about crazy, crazy, crazy flows of ETF flows into Bitcoin. And from a person who's a Bitcoin nasty. And I said, well, actually, I have a chart for that today. It's decelerating. Because I look at the facts, I look at the data, I don't judge decisions based on what someone said. I do my own research, which everyone should be doing. The last couple of days, and this is actually now a couple more days after that, we've actually had outflows from the ETFs. So, um, you know, some traders, they'll tell you, here's a chart, the price of Bitcoin has fallen. Who remembers me a week or two ago from here saying at 72,000, we're going to have a Bitcoin price drop? And it might drop down to 55,000. You heard it today. It could drop down to 55,000, but we're already at 60. So, you know, there's ways to follow what's going on with the big money. And there's also ways to follow along what's happening. In our, this is actually me and uh, Facebook deleted my profile because I was talking too much truth. Uh, it's back up though now, right? 2011. I made a new profile because I became a realtor at that time only for one year. I'm not a licensed realtor now. But you can see even my last post, 2011, 13 years ago, talking about finding the price levels to target one, target two, target three in both directions and all the explanations why. The four reasons why that are probable, two reasons why that are confirmed it'll go up, and one reason why it'll go down, and the percentage of the probability. It's not just a guessing game when you actually can figure out the science. Have someone teach you and uh, learn how to do that. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, I'm not going to get into the charts today, but we will next time. Unless someone has a question, says, what's the price of Bitcoin going to do next? Then I can uh, pull up the chart.
but that's it. What's the price that Good question. Uh, okay, so, we'll be here till nine o'clock. <laughs> no, it's actually. Uh, <laughs> I just jumped right. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah. So, actually, this gentleman has seen me presenting for two years live every week uh, on hmm. online for what we call Satoshi Saturdays, and uh, we did quite well. We did about fifty percent a month without leverage, every single month without a single losing month. And we talked about not just the direction, but how far in the direction it can go, and also the reasons why behind it. But if I take a quick peek, uh, I'll just type it in here, because that's the main coin. And I would I would encourage people to stick right now with the main coin, Bitcoin. Um, although it is altcoin, it is altcoin and meme coin season. So you should be, if you're Ed, that's made like a couple bucks before, it's okay to put a hundred bucks spread out his bag into like a lot of different crazy coins. I, I have some friends that have some amazing names that I wouldn't even be allowed to mention the name of the coin. That's how crazy the names are. But um, let's take a look here at Bitcoin, what's going on. Uh, I'll go to the daily chart here. And um, I'm going to throw on, let's actually hide these. So that's where we're at. We've got, we've come off now. And so when we were hugging this upper Bollinger Band, I was saying that it needs to come back down to near the middle range. We're climbing close to it. We're not there yet. It still has potential to go down. I also just noticed the head and shoulders here uh, that we are at right now. So we're in danger of breaking that neckline. So if that happens, we could decline just as much as we've declined again, which would bring it down to 55,000. However, uh, there is a quick uh, example of why it's important to learn uh, trading and not just guess, because uh, we were talking about this here at the Bitcoin shop just a couple uh, yesterday, actually, and discussing one simple uh, indicator VPVR visible range volume profile and just by clicking one button and ignoring all other indicators we can see all this does is it tells us at what price does the Bitcoin or anything we're looking at spend the most amount of time so for example it hung out over here for a while and so this became longer if the price came uh, stays where it is right now for a long time let's say it doesn't move at all for the next Good month. Sure. What will happen is this uh, little bump here will become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it stops being at that price. That's how it works. So right now, what this tells me is at what levels, and a beginner can quickly identify just by turning on this indicator, how far down you think it can fall before it finds a floor. And so I see a little floor here. I see a very big floor here. And where does that tell me? We can even go down to 43,000. Okay, but on the way, we could pause here at, uh, let me just double check what exactly that level is. And uh, that's about 49,000. So how this works is if I were to put on, whether it's a long position or short position, doesn't matter, whatever your belief is, it would be smart to put a stop loss. Because uh, right now we're at 64.5. Right below 60,000. So, uh, Danny was talking about 60,700. I like psychological numbers like 60,000 because they're psychological for a reason. So, just below 60, I would put in a 59,500 uh, uh, sell order. So profit. Or, if I was bullish, I would have my stop loss there. What does that mean? You can see there's nothing going on there. The price never likes to stay in that range. So if we hit that range, it can just fall off a cliff really quickly to the next amount of time that it's actually hung out for Enjoy. before we know some activity buyers and sellers doing something. So that's one way you can look at it. Um, and right now, the most probable one is to move back up to 68, 63, 68, 63, that's these two bumps. So it's slightly more closer and possible. However, you need to have that stop loss right there because if it hits below 60, just like Dan said, 60,700, I agree with him, but I would put it about a thousand bucks lower. Then for sure, you're gonna go through all those prices like nothing.
like butter with a hot knife. And that means you're going to be sitting at 58,000 asking me what to do now. And then I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, the price could go down to here. 44,000. Next. So that's one way to look at it versus imagine not having this indicator. And you can also, uh, you know, here at a Bitcoin shop, learn how to manipulate the settings of these. Uh, you know, you got your inputs. You got 75 rows. You can change it to 150. Make it look more like uh, detailed. So they're smaller and there's more of them. And anyway, that's just boring you on one indicator, but there's hundreds of indicators. Yeah. What's that uh, size indicator called? Uh, volume profile. Okay. Yeah. So, so this this is the app that Min has. This is just Trading View. What's the name of this app? So this is Trading View chart. Uh, you can get from TradingView.com. I just turned on one indicator. It's an indicator because I've been studying the markets for, gosh, I don't even know how many, 30 years, 30,000 hours. And I've tested indicators for 10 years at a time to see which ones I like or don't like. And so this is just a quick hint how even for a beginner, it's very simple to just turn on the indicator. And this one is called visible range. So if I adjust, like I zoom in or I zoom out, let's say I go to the four hour chart, look how quickly, boom. It'll calculate where it spent the most time. And it always has these levels where it can now give you an idea. You can turn on your rectangle tool and just draw a whole rectangle to give yourself the support and resistance. Yeah. Another question? No, not yet. <laughs> so, so can you imagine just this one indicator alone? If it can make you a million dollars, would it not be worth 10000 just to learn the one indicator? Imagine becoming a member of TSA Bitcoin shop for 150 bucks. And you get to learn how to make money. That's like, it's not even priceless. It's like a no brainer. Great. So I'm Robert Paddock. Uh, I do have a stock uh, Facebook group. We have uh, 130,000 people on our stock trading group. But, uh, you know, stay in touch with Min. You can stay in touch with me. And uh, yeah, we can talk more because I'll be here. Thank you. One of our co hosts, Joy, is leaving soon. You're going to say something? Thanks, Thank you, Joy. Yeah. Okay, so we wrap it up with maybe with some comments from, uh, uh, you know, the real feathers, right? Raymond, you always close. You're a big Raymond, player. yeah. Raymond, Raymond, maybe uh, you know, Raymond and, and, and me, you guys are, well, you know, I'll, I'll hold off. you hold off. Okay, you're, you're, you're licensed, so you're, I know you, you can't play the top. Yeah. Yeah, you what go you, ahead. Uh, you uh, want to, uh, what, whatever you want, you want to tell the guys, because we've been used to, Trading with a broker and basically, you know, pay a full service fee and get your advice, yeah. trade stock, buy and trade, right? That's yeah. the old model versus right. now there's so many new things and uh, like, you know, this community shop popping up. Right? <laughs> like new Edward Jones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, so you like that line, that epic line? I love the line. You like that line? line? It's like a Seinfeld episode. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Well, I'll say it. I'll say it then. Oh, okay, by so. the way, uh, there is some uh, refreshment and water. Help yourself. Yeah, just feel like uh, at the home. Yeah. Go ahead, Rema. Okay, so, okay, I get, yeah, obviously, it's just great to have everybody out here. And I think on behalf of men, uh, who else? Robert spoke. Ed, you like this? You, Dan, Dan, are you still there? Okay, uh, Dan. He left. And, 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 Dan left. And, and yeah. Everybody here, obviously, we want to thank. We really want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, and uh, what I like to say: learning and earning. Yeah. Right? Learn to earn. Yes. Learn to earn. Yeah. <laughs> and and I and I think uh, the one the line that Melanie wants me to share is. Uh, um, you, you, you can't do epic things, right, with basic people. So let's all leave the room thinking that you're epic, being epic, and and obviously thinking outside the box because that's really what this whole this whole uh, learning opportunity is: is thinking outside the box, not doing away with traditional, Tony, not doing away with it, just thinking outside the box and considering all the opportunities in the in the, in the uh, Bitcoin and blockchain world. That said,
guess we're done for the day. Yeah. yeah. Any questions for the speakers? And we have some uh, refreshment. Yeah. So yeah. Help yourself. Feel free to help yourself. And next week we're gonna have another topic from TSA Bitcoin Shop: Become a Diamond Hand in Crypto World. <laughs> I have, I have a bonus for you guys. So this okay. is the stock market right now. And I just want to point out we're at all time highs. We've never been this high. And it's just gone straight up over 1,200 points for the S&P. This is FPY. But the SPX is the same thing. Do you, do you know, do you know like, uh, what's the, uh, the market cap US now versus the GDP? The GDP is 20 trillion. The market cap must be 100 trillion. Keep going. But that's crazy, right? The rule is that like what you want. That's what you want to see. It depends if you're counting derivatives. No, but just stop. Just like one company is like, how many companies are already over a trillion? That's like getting stuff done. Over a trillion. Yeah, I think it's really good for sure. There's a. Microsoft is trillion. That's just that one. That's one company the size of Canada. One company is trillion, right? Yeah, one company, yeah. And then you've got like easily nine hundred trillion dollars, and that's not until five years ago. That's before all this. So you got to be careful now if you've got a bank that has. You know, they, 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 they. the problem with uh, banks is Find it real quick here. The chart. It's actually a picture. Uh, we have what would I call that one? DB Bank. Let's call it exposure. Here it is. It was worth pulling this up. So here's systemic risk. You're hearing it for a reason right now. When it's all time record high, by the way. Systemic risk is the words from 2008. Global contagion, spillover effect, liquidity crunch, banks not lending to other banks because they're scared they'll be bankrupt by next week and they won't get their money back. We're close to this with the office renewals of mortgages. And you can see Credit Suisse down here. Who remembers that from a year ago? Banks from all those problems they're having. So you got RBS, Barclays, these are European ones. BNP Paribas. You got uh, Chinese, Asian banks. Evergrande, real estate in China problems. Evergrande, they have branches around the world. People don't realize that just because they're a Chinese uh, company doesn't mean they don't operate around the world. And here we got Deutsche Bank in the middle. You can see 58 like countries they have branches in, and they own just their own branches. They own shares of all these other banks and vice versa. And in the background, you can see all the other ones that link to each other. This is just Deutsche Bank. So what happens if Deutsche Bank starts firing 20,000 people because they got too many expenses because interest rates are hurting their bottom line and then their stock price goes down? What are ratings agencies going to be forced to do? No matter how much Deutsche Bank is paying them, they're going to have to say Deutsche Bank is downgraded. What happens to the stock price? It goes lower. What happens to uh, Raymond's neighbors in you know, Norvan? They all start feeling like they can't afford a boat and a car. Already, I'm looking at car sales. You can start buying cheaper cars already. Dealers are selling, um, car manufacturers are starting to sell less cars than they have dealerships. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's not going to be a real estate crisis. It'll end up being a global financial crisis again. And what can you do about it? It's opportunity. Volatility is opportunity. If you learn how to trade, you're not just waiting 100 and 200 or 300 years for your money to grow. You can profit by the ins and the outs in both directions. Yeah. And the elephant in the room is AI. It's going to take a way hundreds of years to Uh, I'm not too worried about that part. It, believe it or not, AI is also going to create jobs. Yes. It'll I take agree. it'll take away a lot of jobs, but they're usually like the low paying one yeah. and stuff like that. Right. So I'm not too worried about the AI jobs. What I am worried about is the. Uh, Dozens and dozens and dozens of companies that are already starting. <laughs> <out. laughs> list right now, and that's already happened. But it's somehow not reflecting in the employment numbers. Very interesting what happens in the election year. Company also my like. An engineering company. You don't think that the CEO is like somebody that we know. A man inherits his six years and then he grew up. Even I changed two, three companies over the years alone. Garbage. 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 结束了，结束了，来来，有有有人请你吃饭了，是吧？哎呀，你说吧，哎呦，有人请你吃饭就就行了。那个艾子里还要走吗？还要吃饭？啊、哦，可以，他留下来没事。<笑>没有了。啊。Which is an opportunity to Maybe make a fortune takeaway, warning people about it. Maybe the takeaway should be when trillions of dollars are lost and people are losing their shirts, you could be on the receiving end of that by positioning yourself ahead of the wave when everyone goes following each other downhill, listening to the TV. You could be doing what the elites are doing, positioning yourself into assets that benefit from inflation. When money will flow into Bitcoin, it will flow into real estate, it will flow into stuff that in part that helps to get inflation. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking to their side. Just in time for the election in November. Ah, Jinan, you want to eat? 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 Ah, Jinan, you want to eat?
啊，不让。但是过去就行了。啊，不要不要不要，去定好位置，去去定个六个人的位置。他他他想一想，等于他想一想，你叫他吗？不是是是是，他想想想想,想,想,想,想，没没想好。哦哦，那没关系没关系，我都结束完了，你自己去吃。嗯、对对对对，我知道。就 Discord， 就搞了三个。Yeah, but it's gonna put the bill ready in the last hour. Yeah, it's gonna put the bill ready in the last hour. Yeah, it's gonna put the bill ready in the last hour. 还有还有不懂东西，哎呀，去人家忙啊，去后面走呀，从后面去打。那么大的碟子搞了两个杯子，那小气死了。这就手往里面一抓一扔嘛。啊，就是抓一下不就行了吗？啊，其实我不会离开它，因为我有冲突和指标，和它的根本，它们冲突。啊 ，The seasonality says it's going to drop a little bit until June at June thirtieth, and June thirtieth it'll start trickling back up to a new high. And it could hit three thousand. That's what's trying to bugging me to tell you, without a disclaimer. I'm not an advisor. I'm not giving advice. If you do sell, understand. I'm still bullish long term. Three thousand for gold, easy. But because that's because of the Swift and Bricks.、Uh, actually, not counting Bricks and Swift issue. That's on top of that. So it could go higher than three thousand. If that banking system starts having a, cr- a clash, but seasonality-wise, I would just say it's not going to cost you anything to wait until June thirtieth, and then you can have even the annual seasonal cycle on your side too.、Yeah. And probably, cross your fingers, it'll be lower than where it is now. But don't hate my guts if it's already three thousand by then. <laughs> like I said, if they make a black swan event before the election, then gold will benefit. It's usually benefiting from hedge against instability in the plus, world. Plus, interest rates coming down, right? Interest rates, interest rates going down is not a good thing.、Uh, oh, it's good for gold, isn't it? A lot of.、Um, it is good. Yes. yes. Right. Good good. Yes. Yeah, I want you to think of it this way. I'll, I'll give you the the important part. This is all what is usually going to be the case. Interest rates, if they go up. That currency goes up. So in Canada, Canadian dollar goes up. In the U.S., the U.S. dollar goes up. If interest rates go up, so if the interest rate goes up in the U.S., the dollar goes up. The U.S. dollar is more expensive. You need less of those more expensive dollars to buy something. But if you're right, if interest rates go down, U.S. dollar goes down. They're cheaper. You need more of them. You're gonna see Bitcoin go up, Euro go up. <laughs> Uh, Chef. Chef. What's your question? Or ten thousand, whatever. But yeah, be careful because the the point is, don't just be parked in any one thing. Withdraw money. Withdraw money. I sent you the link. Did you read the article? I did yet. Oh, you buy the wallet. Did you get ID? Oh, oh then you buy the wallet. So they have a.、Uh, you can transfer the USDT to the wallet. But it's interesting. We have to have the fee. How much the fee I have to pay? I don't think it's too much fee. Yeah, you go to a TM TM and transfer. You get the wallet from here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Easy for it to keep going higher. I, I, I can go. I can meet with you. 
Because instead of raising enough for the down payment, I raise enough for two down payments. I put one down payment for the house and the other down payment into buying put options on this chart that's record high. So the stock market falls 5%, I have my house paid off. If the stock market falls 5%, which is 30 days overdue, next week, I paid off my house in one week. That's what I'm doing now. Paying off houses faster than cars. <laughs> And no one's trying to do that. Robert, I'm just wondering, are, you, are we planning to have a networking option for me? Because I have to actually leave to get to something else. We, we're, we're done the meeting. I'm going to be heading off for a dinner. Yeah, and we're, we're finished. So uh, okay. thank you all for being here. We appreciate you. And we'll see you again. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to move to an English version. I have yeah. a good computer with microphone oh, okay. and Zoom. Maybe next time. We can stream it on Zoom. Oh, and yes, okay. Give the user any time to access. To yeah, present. yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, sure. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Reza? Reza? I'm going to show you how to withdraw the money from a TMGM. So, bring the wallet, our PX card. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll see you so, here tomorrow. Yeah. See, you here tomorrow. see me tomorrow? I'm here. Oh, no, Monday. On Monday. 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 Thanks for coming. Yeah. yeah. This microphone, I can change yeah. the settings. Okay. I can catch the whole room or just the speaker. Okay. Okay. Cool. It's very sensitive. Is it very sensitive? You can catch even when Ed's talking. Is it similar to that one?
Thank you.